Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back again to the African Tech Gurus. This is your channel where learning is by doing. So uh, this is another new day where I've come up with another new video. I believe you have tried out something here and there and here I am coming with a solution to help you, but not only to give you an answer, but to help you understand each and every concept that you are coming through. So now let's see what you're supposed to cover this day and uh, okay first of all let me just give you an overview that this particular task has what you call the mandatory task that's 100 percent and it also has the optional task that is 100 percent totaling up to 200 percent maximum so the the maximum you can get out of this particular task is 200 percent which i believe that in as much as you score score that 200 percent and get to understand each and every concept now let's go down here and we see resources which i believe you have tried to go through each and every resource provided here and if not i will advise you to still go through the same uh, resources and also remember we posted a video that talked about the content review where we try to explain each and every concept that has been provided in these resources given to you so now so today we are going to learn about this uh, more function and more nested loops remember we say what we learned the previous day which we, we is what will build what we are to learn today so remember one thing don't forget in as much as you learn today ensure that you understand today's concept that will build on what you learn in the following day now guys let's go and see some of the few questions or the, the quiz that we are supposed to cover in this particular uh topic if you are not yet done with the quiz allow me to take you through in the shortest time possible what is the return value of the following function that is question zero what is the return value so we have int some function remember that you said that the function has to have the return type it has the function name and it has the parameters so the syntax for having a function is that the return type the function name and the parameters and also the body of that particular function so what we have in some function int is the return value some function is the function name void is the parameter now the the function of the body uh, the body of the function is int i for and all this in between this curly bracket so now we have been asked int i for i is equal to zero and i is less than 10 i increment and then print percentage d i d percentage d means a specifier for an integer so you have been told that print i so first of all what will be printed zero and then it will check is zero less than 10 yes increment it so it will print zero and increment it to one it come back again it check is one less than 10 yes print that line return that uh, i that is one and then increment again so at the end of the day we will have how many we will have 10 of them we will have 10 of them because it print from 0 1 2 3 up to 9 so it will return 10 so what is the output of the following piece of code int i i is equals to 9 while i while increment this one print percentage d i so what you can notice is that this one you have not been given any increment option what it means is that within this particular while there is all it has all what i can say that it all whatever right that it does within this particular while so we have not been given any other additional uh, uh additional something that can guide us so what all while i increment so we are just incrementing and this is post decrement post decrement so what happens is that you decrement first that is it will begin with eight so you decrement first before you do you you print it so 9 minus 1 is 8. Then 8, 7 up to 0. Then we come to this one, the return value of the following function. In some function is the then percentage D and then 12. Then return 98. What will return? It will return what? 98. There is no way we have said that it has to print it, return the other. This is the return and this is what you printed. What you printed is 12, but the return is 98. What is the output of the following piece of code? Int i i is equal to zero while i is less than 10 increment and then is post increment then percentage d i modulus 2. so it will say i is less than i is zero yes is it less than 10 yes increment it so one so one one uh divided by two 
what will I have? It is zero. One divided by two is half, and we cannot print half, so you have zero. So it will print zero, and then it go back and increment. Now I increment to two. Two divided by uh, two is one, and then we have also we come to three. Three divided by two is one and a half, which is uh, will still remain with one. So we say zero, one, uh, one, two, two, and also up to five. So that is the answer. Then question, what is the output of the following piece of code? This one, int i for int is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i increment, and all this. You print the, you, whatever you get as i multiplied by two. So zero multiplied by two is zero. Then you go, you get, you increment to get one. So one multiplied by two is two. So you get uh, two. So two, and then to get to three, three is less than 10, yes, increment to three, and then multiply three by, by two is six. So you go back, increment, and then you do it. So that is uh, another one. So what's the output of the following piece of code? Int i, and then i is negative 9. So while i is less than 0, print percentage d negative i. So we have negative 9, and then we say negative 9. So we just say negative into bracket negative 9. A negative and a negative come up with a positive. So we will not begin from negative 9 downwards, but we'll begin from positive 9. That's 9, 8, 7, 5, 6, uh, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we'll just, whatever, it's supposed to be negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, but it will be a negative into a negative that number. Then we'll print out a positive number. So that is the answer. Then what's the value of the piece of code? This one, int i is 48, and this is less than 58, int plus plus. And then you have been told, percentage c it is not percentage d so percentage c means that it prints a character and not a, a an integer so it will print what zero up to it will print zero up to nine the what, what does it mean it is zero up to nine in the ascii table in the ascii table zero up to nine in the ascii table is represented by 48 to 58 so what's the output of the following piece of code in i i is equal to zero while i is less than 10 print percentage d I modulus 2. So first of all, 0 modulus 2. 0 modulus 2, we get what? 0 modulus 2, you get 0. And then you get to 1. 1 modulus 2 is still 1. That will remain. Then 3 modulus 2 is still uh, 0. Uh, no, no, 2. 2 modulus 2 is 0. Then 3 modulus 2 is 1. So it will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and ending like that. So what is the output of the following piece of code? Int I then i is equal to 9, while i, this is what you call the pre-decrement. It will decrement, it's called a pre-decrement. So this one, it pre-decrement, and it is between, okay, there's a difference between the other one and this one. Why? Because while, and then decrement, nothing, no, nothing else we have been given to determine how we'll able to run our code. And that is why all the conditions are inside the while, uh, this condition. And that is why the answer will be 8, 7, uh, six five three two one task now let's get into the task guys let's get into the task and do the task so allow me to open my vagran this way okay today i will be using vagran i will not be using the web terminal but all in all they are all the same what i have just do is that i'm using uh, vagran i'm not using web terminal for some of the security reasons and that is why today you will not i say that you notice there is something that i will do unusual but all in all until we get the right thing remember one thing the check can always check is for they always check for one the documentation that is the betty styling and two the output of your code if your code of your code is correct then you are marked if also the documentation is correct, then you are given marks. And that is what checker normally do. And uh, so today, today, guys, I will, I will uh, try to do this. Okay, let me just do this to that side. And then I have this one. So guys, first of all, I have given some few steps that I will go through. What are some of the steps that I will do? Here are some of the steps that I will use in this particular task. Number one, number one task is, uh, so I say that these are the 
the step that I will do, I will use while doing this particular task. First of all, clone the repository ALX law programming because that is what we'll be using. Guys, let me take you first of all to the requirements that you need eh? so that it will not be I'm just doing my own things without you understanding what are requirements. Okay, allowed editors is Veeam or Emacs. Okay, for me, I'm using VI that is in the background. And then you will run, will be compiled using this one, and then the, the GCC, that is the GCC. And then you, all your files will end with a new line. Remember, slash n, that all your file will end with a new line. Then number three is that, okay, also, read me file at the root of your folder. You need to have a read me file. Any, any director that you create, while doing some coding here in LX, ensure that every of your directory has a readme file. Then your code should be in Betty style. That is the thing I told you, that must have a readme file. You need to have a Betty styling that is in a well manner. And then another thing is that the, the correct output. Then you are not allowed to use global variables and then not more than five function bar line. Bar file, I'm sorry. You are not allowed to use standard library, any of the function, uh, I think like print and whatever is forbidden. You're only allowed to use put car. Use put car. And that is why you will find me uh, creating a file called put car. Where will I get put car? In your requirement, you will see you are allowed to use put car. Click on that put car. It will di direct you to another repository with some code. You copy that code and then you use to create a put car. I will show you how to go about it. And then you don't have to push your put card dot c you don't have to push not necessarily but you can push but has nothing to do with your the output of your code and then you need also to have main dot c header file and then don't forget to push that particular um, main dot h header file so guys now that i have taken you through the requirements allow me to take you also through my step that i have uh, come up with to ensure that we achieve the desired output so these are my steps. Clone the repository ALX. Then the question is, have I cloned? Let me list list file. I don't have. Okay, let me just cd into ALX. Change directory into ALX directory. And then I list file. Yes, I have that directory called ALX low programming. So what next? Let me cd into that particular ALX like that low programming. like that and then i list file what file do i have i have all these kind of files here so i don't have the directory so that was step number one was to clone and then that is done step number two have this particular remember that your your code should be inside a, a folder called c directory called 0x04 more function and nested loops so we have to create this particular directory so let me come here and then I click on copy. Let me copy them, then I, I create. So let us come and say mkdir to create directory. And then what's the directory name is what I paste here. And then I click enter. So you notice that, guys, you will notice that I will have, um, you notice that I will have also now another directory called 0x04 more function nested loops. So what next? I have to change into direct directory, that is cd, into that directory for me to now begin doing some coding. So cd, that is changing in the directory, like that, and then I click enter. So from there now, I am able to see I don't have anything in it. So what next? Next step I have to do is create a readme file. So create a readme file. So how will I create a readme file? I'll come here and say vi read me dot md like that and i click enter like that and then i click i to go into is insert mode then what will be my read me file so i'll just write like this guys okay hash hash three hash more what does not mean you will try to read what's called the markdown language markdown language is the language that is used to create the read me file so Three hash in this case means that it's a level three heading in HTML. When we talk about HTML is that it is a level three heading of HTML. It's equal to that. So three hash. Then I say um, 
I say more, more functions and more nested loops. Allow me to write like that. So that's my text. Remember that your readme should not be empty. And then I escape like this. Guys, I come here and then I list file. I notice that I have now a readme file. That step is now done. Let's see next thing. Create a main.h file. What did we say about main.h file, guys? We say that main.h file is a header file that will be used as a file for this particular assignment that will contain our prototypes. And when we talk about prototypes is that it's kind of, a, it's a prototype is like a function that tells us what is the return value of a function, what is the parameter of a function, what is the name of that particular function. So at this step now, we want to create a main.h file. So if you don't understand what main.h file, allow me to direct you that you go back to our previous video on content review where I explain what is main.h file. So now, without much, let me go and create a file that's called main.h, bi main.h, then enter like that, and I click I to go to insert mode. So I'm now in the insert mode. How will I create how will I create uh, main.h? Guys, I will not take my to create. I will just use what I've uh, created here. This is the main. So this is the syntax. Let me begin by here. Copy this one. Then I explain to you the other. Let me just copy the syntax. Paste here. And then I come here. I check this one. Copy. And then let me paste it here. Let me have it like that, like that. So now this is my syntax for creating main.h file. Then what do we have to include in this main.h file? What do we have to include? In our main.h file, we will include these things, guys. Uh, you will see here, it say prototype int is upper. Prototype int is upper, and then in into a bracket, that is int c, mean that the return time is int, and then is upper is the name of the function. Int is the int is the the data type that it will be for that particular parameter, and then parameter name, variable name. Okay, now guys, let's now see how I'm able to write. I will explain to you. First of all, you need to have this one called put car. That is always the first one. Let me now copy, and then I paste it here like that. And then the second one, where that the second one comes in, it comes on task zero, is upper. You copy this one, prototype int is upper. You copy this one, and then you paste there. So let me show you. I copy something like this. This guy's here, and it is the same as what is in task one, task zero. Then I paste like that. They're all the way, you have to scroll all the way in every, each and every uh, task, task one. You will use int is digit, int c. So let me use int is digit in c like this copy this here and i paste it here so i will continue like that guys to the end of this particular end of this particular task or the prototype for this particular task but without that allow me now to allow me not to go all this way not to copy all this but i will just go directly and copy what i've created so that it will be easy and we will go fast so allow me to go to this particular i say that i will copy this one so allow me to come here and copy all this up to this end and then i copy like this and i come here guys here and i paste it like that so at that point we are done with main.h file so it contains all the prototypes for this particular task then i list file now i have readme main.h Let's come to the third one. Let's see this, the next step we are supposed to cover. The next step is create a put car file. Create a put car file. Where do we get create a put car file? Guys, I ask you that in the requirement, you will see that you are allowed to use boot car, this one. You will click on uh, this one. It will direct you to where we'll get a code for put car. But for my case, I've already copied that one. This is not my code, guys. It is what I copied from where it is say that you are supposed to do it. They will allow to use it. This is the code I copied. 
because you are just supposed to, you are allowed to copy that one so now let me just copy let me just create a file called put car let me just come here and i copy the content of that particular file copy and then i come here then i say bi underscore put car uh, put car dot c that is the file you'll be using to run your gcc and then enter and then i click i to go to insert mode then i'll say paste my code i paste my code like that and then i escape like this then i go that way so at this point you see that i am now having uh, three files bootcarme.h and readme and uh, md so what next guys the next thing that i have to do is to create the main files main.c files is this one let me just show you what what do i mean when i say main.c files you see this one it says zero main.c you will have one main.c and all those so i'll have to create all of them how do i create so let me create them so i'll say v not vi i'll not use vi in this case because i just want to create them and have them so i will use torch like that and copy the files name which has zero main.c one main.c three main.c four main.c five main.c six main up to all the way up to one or one main.c i copy the files name like that and then i come here and then i paste them like that and then i click enter it will create all the files and then i say list files so you, see, you notice that i have now zero main.c uh, up to all the way to 101 main.c how what are these it is this one guys which we have here zero main.c and then i will have the content one main.c where is it one main.c then i have the content then two main.c all the way like that instead of copying one by one i just decided and, and then I, I create in the notepad and then i paste all of them so i have created that one that is another step let's come to another step now come to main zero main.c the first one and then i copy this one this particular text i have here is this particular uh, code here you see task zero task zero you will have zero main.c it will include include main that's what i have include stdi ho that's what i have uh, all this code is what i have here and then card c this is what i have here so this one i cannot copy because this one is pdf i will not copy but i will not i will I want to copy what i already created here so it is not something that i'm using that is different it is the same same thing so let me copy the content here copy this one up to this end copy like this and then i come here then i say vi i say vi zero dash main dot c like that enter and then i click i and then i paste the code like that escape let me do that and then i come to vi one main dot c that is the second one one main dot c is for the task one this one so i'm copying code like this include main and all this all this for this one so what has the code the code for main.c it is the same as this one so i'll just copy this one copy here and then i paste sorry for that yes i have it then escape i escape like that so i have created i have created for for zero main.c one main.c what is the next one the next one is two main.c two main.c so i say v let me clear first of all clear so i say vi2 dash main.c and then what's the content of vi2 main.c this is the content i'll copy here is the same as what you have on your end i'll say copy then i'll come here where is it here and then i paste it like that then i escape again i like that then i'm done with that let me go to vi3 dash main dot c where is that 3 dash main dot c is for task 3 here 3 3 dash main dot c and this is the code here 
this is the code that you have to, to have it remember what's the function of main.c file guys it contained the main function it contained the main function remember you need the main function and you want the function that you are creating to run your code so the main.c file will contain the main functions so now enter uh, enter like that then i click i to go to insert mode and then i will copy my three main.c file here like this and then i click on copy and then i paste like that then i go to for vi 4 dash main dot c then let me show you for main where is it this here for main dot for main dot c so and then i click on enter and then i click on i that is to insert mode and then this is the code i'm supposed to copy here and then let me copy over from my end because i already created a notepad i come here i click on copy paste yes let me go to the next step next step is create vi 5 dash main dot c enter then where is the where is that five main dot c is include all this void now more numbers return zero so let me copy that one okay guys you're not don't worry i'm why i'm copying okay you are allowed to copy this you are allowed to copy this let me repeat you are allowed to copy this i escape like that so next is bi main dot c bi far it's now six we are now going to six so a six it is six dash main dot c and then insert i there was the code you are supposed to print line zero two ten negative four so let me copy what i have it is the same come here i copy this way sorry i come here i copy this way click on copy come here i paste then i do like this then i come to seven 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 guys it is vi seven dash main dot c like that you click on i to go in sun mode then i copy the diagonal zero two ten and four so where is my mine i have it here i click on copy then i have it paste here then i do this way then what next vi vi now eight i think it's eight next is eight yes a eight dash main dot c then enter then insert as i to insert mode then copy print square two ten zero where is that code i have that code here up to here copy here like that then uh, vi now you, you don't have nine i think you don't have nine let me check we don't have nine yeah we don't have main file for main.c for four nine so we jump to ten so we vi ten dash main dot c after these guys will go now to our files and create one by one here then let me copy this for ten this is the main file for ten copy have it here paste and then i do this way and then i'll come to now i've created for 10 i'll come to 11. 11 doesn't have again let's go to 12. the 12 is 101 so vi vi main it is vi 101 dash main dot c then i click on enter like that and then i click insert again guys and then i copy the code you say print 98 4 2 10 24 and all those let me copy that one i'll copy it like this and then i copy i'm sorry after i've copied it like this copy and then i come here and i click on paste so after that guard after that far guys we are done with all main.c what is the next step now we when we list all our files we have it there it means that they are not now empty they have something in it next thing is create the task files the task file what are the task file in this case now uh, let's go back now to our task one let's now begin to write our code 
that is the code to solve what we have been asked to do number one is that you have been told write a function that check for uppercase characters guys you have to check whether that given character or whatever that you give as a parameter is it a, a, a uppercase letter or a lowercase so it will say return one if the character is uppercase and return zero if the uh, the letter or the character is not an uppercase so we will expect something like this guys we'll expect something like a is one a is zero so if it is capital a it will return one if it is small letter a it will return zero what does it mean it means that we'll have to create a function that will receive an input or a parameter and that parameter you receive from the main function so it will receive a in the first place and that a it will have to tell us whether it is upper or lower so now let's see it let's do it let's come here let's create a file called zero is upper dot c zero is upper dot c is the file name as you can see here file zero is upper dot c so vi and then we have zero is upper like that dot c enter then i click i to go to insert mode now we are now writing code how can that be let me copy this code and i explain to you as usual for the purpose of time i will explain to you don't worry I'll, i will i will have to explain each and every part of the code as much as i can so first of all guys you will see include main.h file what does include main.h file means it is including the cont the prototype the prototype itself is in another file called main.c file where is that main.c file it is the file that we created earlier before remember in the around third last step there i say that we create main.c and what does main.c contain it contains all the prototype for this particular task that we are supposed to cover today and then we have here guys here we have uh, the the comments the comments i've had every people are complaining that uh, the, there is always this one underscore they say that there is not a description for the return value that is the problem when this one does not match write this one to match with this one and then you give a space here and then you give a space there yes you give a space here and then you give a space there and then you describe what does that particular function does check for lowercase or uppercase character so and then you have c tell betty what c is it what c is it betty will complain if she does not understand what c is so c is character to be checked betty then return it will return a one for uppercase character and zero for anything less so tell betty that what this particular function will do it will return for me one if it's an uppercase character and zero if it's for anything else if it's lowercase it will return zero so guys i'm explaining how this particular comments works for this particular task zero alone so i will not explaining about i will not be explaining about the 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 comments in the next task but i'll just be spelling about the code itself so now let's come to this particular now we have the function that is int is upper int and then c is upper is the function name int is the return type int c is the parameter that we passed and then we have now after we have passed the parameter it will check whether it is uppercase or lowercase now guys this is where now you need the knowledge of ascii table we say that ascii table from ascii table from 65 up to 90 are uppercase characters from 97 up to 122 it is lowercase characters that's what you say guys so it will check is the character which you remember why is it asking in numbers because you have given a parameter in integers so it will check c is greater than 65 it will check in integers because you have passed in an integer parameter so c is greater or equal to 65 and c is less or equal to 90 and then what you'll do you return one if it is something different from that if it is 97 of which 97 is a lowercase return zero so we expect to see one when it's uppercase and zero when it is lowercase i believe i've spent that particular code well understood let me escape code like that and then i click enter 
Then from here, guys, what's the next step? The next step is for me to run Betty. I know this is where most of you are interested to see whether, uh, whether we'll have Betty running like this. I will have like this and click on paste. Then I click Betty. Oh, my Betty runs. My Betty never complained. She never complained this time around. She said that, oh, it's okay. There is no problem with it. I have no problem with your code. Then what next? Let's run our GCC. Our GCC is here. Let me copy here. And then let me paste it here. Enter. Yes, list file. Yes, you notice that we have another file called zero is up in green. So let's check the what is inside. Zero dash is upper like that <clears throat> and i click enter you notice that it is a one and the a four zero so when it is uppercase one when it's lowercase that one guys to that point we have understood that that is how the code works we have got the right out out output we have uh, solved betty and now what next is to git add git add git commit so git commit and minute not uh, stress much. I have already created git commit here. So I'll just copy git commit like that. I'll come here and paste. Then I click enter. So now I've done that. What next is git push? So I push to my repository. But guys, as I say this, you notice there's something I will not do. What is this thing that I will not do? I will not run my checker why i will not run my checker guys because of one reason the biggest reason as to why i run my, my checker is because of some security issues uh, from the alx which uh, i don't want to be suspended yes so that is why i am not running checker because checker contained my e credentials so but at that point i have shown you the output and I've shown you the Betty that it is working and GCC is working and is giving us the right output and Betty is not complaining. So we are done with that particular task. Let's get into the second task. That is task one. Let me clear my terminal, clear. So the second task, what does second task do? The second task say that write a function that check for digit zero through nine. So prototype int is digit int C. So it's an integer and it's C between zero and true through nine. So return one if C is a digit, otherwise zero. So what is the expected output? It will all be like this one. If it is a, a digit, it will return one. If it is a letter, it will return zero. So this is our expected output, guys. These are supposed to guide you. So this is expected output zero, one, and A is equal to zero. So now what next? Let's create the file name called is digit. So file name is called bi1 uh, underscore is digit. So we want to check that one dot c. So that's our file name. Then I click enter. Then I click i to go to insert mode. So let me copy my code and then I explain to you. So I have it here up to this point. Then I click on copy. Then I have it here. I paste like that. So what does it mean? I will not explain mean. I have explained. I will not explain this one. I have explained this for Betty. You have to, to tell Betty whatever you are doing. And I, I will always only repeat this one. Is digit. This is this one has to be the same as this one. And then this one, which is the, the parameter, is what you are passing here. Tell Betty what we are passing. And tell Betty what is the return. Yes. And then you will never have issues with Betty. So int is integer in C. And then if Remember, we say that it has to be 0 to, to 9. So it will say it int. It will refer to ASCII. In the ASCII table, 48 up to 57 is 0 to 9. So it will check between is C greater than 48? Yes. And is it less than 50, 57? Yes. Then return 1. Meaning that between 0 and 57, they are all integers. Then we'll return 1. If it is above that or something different from that, you'll return 0. Because it is not an integer. Remember, we are checking what, what are we checking? We are checking whether a character passing is an integer or a, a letter or a character or a, let me say an alphabet. So I'm explaining that and uh, escape now. 
Then from there now, let's uh, run Betty. So I'll come here and say, Betty, check my code kindly and be good. Be good girl. Yes, Betty is a good girl. So let's run GCC. Now that Betty is a good girl, let's run our GCC copy here and I paste, enter. After that, let me come here and git odd, git add like this, paste, enter, and then git commit. I've, I develop all these steps, guys. I never wanted to uh, have more time here, but I just wanted to have enough time to explain my code other than writing but they are working as you can see and then next now that okay we run our gcc okay we never check the output let's this file then we have uh, let's check the output of this is digit is digit like that then say is uh, like that it's the correct output eh? well, that's what you expected remember what you are supposed to do is that correct output betty not complaining that is all so let's come to the, the third task that task is saying that that task is asking us to to what to do what write a function that multiply two integers multiply two integers and then int mool so you write a call that multiply two integers then we need two integers which is a and b so first of all what next what you're supposed to, to do is to create the file name that is two dash uh, mool dot c then enter like that. Uh, what do I say? Okay, I never say vi. vi to dash mole dot c like that. Enter. Then I click i to go to insert mode, and then I will copy the code and I'll try to explain. So I'll come here and copy the code like this. Okay, let me like this. Where is it? Up to this point. Then copy. Then I come here. I click on paste. Then my code is. It will have this function. And then in result, in result, result equals a times b. Whatever you you are declaring another variable called in result, and then what does the variable in result will contain? It will contain the multiplication of a and b. And where are we going to get a and b? Is from the main function. From the main function, as you can see here, you notice that this guy is passing in uh, 98 and 10 24. So it first of all multiply the, the multiplication of 98 and then 24 to give us 100, 352. And then the second thing is negative 402 and 496. It will multiply that to give us negative 164, 65, 92. So that is what it does. It stores the result of multiplication of that and then it returns the result. Then from there now let's escape like this. And then I get, okay, not get, but Betty. Betty, where are you? Betty be a good girl. Betty be a good girl. So copy. And then I copy Betty. Kindly Betty be a good girl. Enter. Oh, Betty is a good girl. Let me clear my terminal. It's, it's too much. Then I run GCC. GCC. B GCC. In this case, I expect you to be good. Error. No such. Uh, no such file or directory where is it it's asking me three print numbers dot c oh i don't have that i copy the wrong one what have i copied let me check first of all i gave the wrong name i'm sorry i'm supposed to run another different gcc and it's not running this one it is running what is having at the end is not three print it is uh it is two mule so let me correct that one let me paste again here. I will correct and have it to, to create for me two dash mule. And then where will I change? I will change here, guys, where it says three print. Uh, let me show you. I'm using, what I'm using is, uh, I have to use, I have to use here. I have to remove this like this and say, Two dash mule dot c, yes, and then I'm using which main c? I'm using two main dot c. Then end, and then I click enter. Yes, now GCC, you are a good boy. List file, 
you have it now so let's the output like this to dash um, mu like that enter then you have the answer yes that's the correct output next is git odd git add then git commit commit what message am i committing with let me come here i just copy this one so that will not take much of your time but guys i believe you have seen sometimes even it's, it's not always that you always get the right answer sometimes you get errors so that's why you i believe you notice okay what is he saying this is saying uh, it's taking me to another where i have to do it but i will not go that way hello so uh i was trying this one this one. okay vagran had messed me a bit but now i'm back so i was doing commit when I, it messed me up so let me enter like that and then i get push like that so i have pushed that one let me go to the next task so our next task is on task number uh, task three what does it say write a function that print the numbers from zero to nine followed by a new line draw type is print numbers so you are using put car remember you're using put car twice in your code so you're using put car and you're using print and only put car print in form of character that's percentage c so what can we do now let's first of all create the file name and what's the file name is three print numbers so three print numbers that is the file name it's called three print numbers.c so let's come here and click on vi and then the name of the file here guys is this one then enter then i click i to go to insert mode and then from there now you are writing a function that print that print numbers from zero to nine so you are to check you are first of all we will check between uh, zero to nine and we will print in uh, c that is put car c okay let me copy and then i explain to you copy then i come here i paste like that so what I, it means is that you are creating a variable called car then for c which is car the variable c is equal to zero and then c has to be equal or less than nine and then you increment but you print put car c meaning that okay still using yeah you're printing the put car c that is the value of that particular variable then you print it out in as long as it is still less than nine then you click on escape like that enter then from here now i check i'm um, checking betty so betty be a good girl in this case be a good girl so i click on paste and then i click enter so betty is now a good girl so let's check gcc what will gcc do gcc hope you will behave even you uh, let me copy okay copy it up to that far click on copy then i paste it here then i click enter it say error before the numeric constant where in three main dot c i've been given an error three main dot c so i will say vi three uh, dash main dot c i'm going uh, like i've given an error to be on before the constant numeric that is in line one one so i click enter so it says yes there's something i put it wrong here you notice this one let's try and remove click i to go in sun mode and then i got the top here let me remove this one i press it wrongly like this let me remove that one i believe now my code will work escape now guys hope you are able to see that we are getting errors so if we get error try to understand where error is then i now let run gcc now now gcc works ls yes we have now three print numbers so our gcc is now working i don't have to worry but guys don't be worried whenever you get error just try to figure out where the error is yes it's part of life and it is there of course you, you get an error so let's check what is inside this particular uh, executive file you have created the output is zero up to nine is that true is what is what is expected of us yes it is expected zero to nine then what next we get add we get add like that 
then git uh, let me commit the git commit i will use what i have here the git commit that is this one copy when you get an error remember one thing don't worry just try to to find the error where it is and ask for your friend and then it says what does it says my error again it says what it says okay okay i notice where the error is i never have it there is no git so i come here copy so don't panic make, when you make errors don't panic yeah git now git push don't panic just relax and try to find where the error is we are done with that let's go to task four task four Task four, it says that write a number that print number between zero to nine, followed by a new line, okay? But don't print what, two and four. So we need to have somewhere if, to test if it is equal to four and two, don't print that line, proceed. So let's clear our terminal, clear, like that. Then vi, what's the name of the file? What is the name of the file? The name of the file in this case is four print most numbers four print most numbers except only two and four i click i to go the insert mode and then let me copy the code and i explain to you up to this far guys let me click on copy here and i come here click on paste and then you will notice that i have a variable this one and then i say for this one is equal to zero and this one has to be equal to less or equal to nine and then i increment from there if then c is equal to two and c is equal to four and there you see a negation here, a exclamation here, which means negate. In as long as, in as long as C is not equal to 2 or C is equal to 4, continue printing those numbers. So print number 0, 1, 2, 3. No, okay, 0, 1. If, uh, when it reaches 2, 2 is greater than, is, is equal to 2 and we do not want that one. So we skip that one, we go 3. Then 4, skip 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes. Then that's what it does. So in as long as it is not equal to two and four, print all numbers except those who are equal to that one. So escape now, like that. Then what I do next, I run Betty, 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 Betty. So Betty, we believe that you, you will be a good girl. We don't have time. We believe that you will be a good girl. Like this. Yes, Betty is a good girl. GCC, we believe that you will be good, even you. Kindly be good. So I come here, click on copy. I come here, I click on paste. Then I click enter. Yes, GDC is saying it's fine. So list file, we check. So what do we check? We check for print more numbers like this. That's what we want to check what is inside. This one like this. And then we paste like that. Click enter. Yes, we have the right output. Yes, we have the right output. It is true. This is what we have, except only two and four. We don't have two and four. So let's go next. That's number five. Write a function that print uh, ten times the number of the number from zero to fourteen, followed by a new line. So prototype is that void more print uh, more numbers. So you can only use put car three times in your code, and then it prints only how many? Only print ten times the numbers from 0 to 14. So it will print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. How many times? 10 times. It will print 10 times. So let's check our code. Let's first of all create the name of the file. It's called 5 more numeric. More numbers, I'm sorry. So let me come here and I copy the name of the file. Then copy. I come here and say vi. Then the name of the file like this. I click enter. Then I click I to go to insert mode. And then let me copy the code and I explain to you. Come here. Okay, I believe this is the end. Yes, this is the end. So I come here, copy, have it here, paste. So guys, you will notice we have an integer i and j. Then for i, I am using integer i and j. For i, it will just to print uh, is print it print new lines. For you notice that i is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to 10. That is the number of times it will print numbers. It will print how many times? 10 times. So what we'll do, it will not print any output. This will just print for you new lines, new lines. So it's like asking, it's like this code is saying, print for me 10 new lines. 
which has nothing in it. Now the inside for loop here, this the inside code. Let's say if R j is equal to zero, j is less or equal to fourteen. This is where now it will print from zero to fourteen. And then in as much as it is still less than fourteen, it will increment. It will print zero. Yes. It will print one. Yes, less than fourteen. Two, less than fourteen. Three, less than fourteen. Until it reaches fourteen. So it will print zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. How many times now? The outside code, the four outside for loop will tell us how many times should we print that. I believe you understood now. Let's escape like this. Then enter. Then I run Betty. Betty, be a good friend. We don't have time. Be a good friend. Copy. I come here. I paste like that, and I click enter like that. Now Betty is saying it's well and good. So I tell Betty, and uh, let me run GCC and ch check what GCC will give me. Enter. GCC says it's fine and okay. LS. So we want to see this one. What do we have is do we are we printing zero to fourteen fourteen times? Yes. Let's check. Then paste there like that. Yes, we are printing zero to fourteen. How many times? Ten times. So we are done with that, guys. Let's git add like that, and then git commit. So our git commit in this case, I will use what I've created. That is, it contains up to the commit message. Eh? This one. I'm using the title of the task to be the commit message. Copy. Then I have it here and the paste. Then I click enter. Then git push to my repository, and then I'm done with that. Let me go to the next task. That is task number six. Task number six. Task number six, guys. In this case, what are we doing? We are creating a file name uh, vi six. Okay, let me just copy so that I will not have pre uh, spelling errors. Copy. Then I paste it here. Click enter. I click I to go to insert mode, and then I will copy this code and I explain to you. I click on copy, then I come here, I click on paste, and then I click escape like this, guys. Okay, no, before I escape, before I escape, let me explain the code. In I, for I is equal to zero, I is less than n. That is n is what will be given. This one, what is the what is the question? Let me check the question. The question is saying that. Uh, write a function draw a line in terminal so it will print line that is a dash how many times we'll see will it print it? the number of times it will print a dash uh, the underscore i'm sorry is okay printing underscore join underscore will make a line so it will print underscore depending on the number of uh, times given so in this case if it's given zero so int is zero i is less than n in as long as i is less than n n is what you are given which is zero then so is i less than n no then increment increment to one so check again is i uh, less than n yes i is zero n is one so what if it's one now print one uh, one dash and then increment so it will print a number of times for example it will print two two dash to make a short line it will come and print 10 based on it is given 10 so it print 10 dashes to make one line which is a bit long and then this also this is what we're expecting it this one the zero that's when you give zero to win nothing this one then this one so now that is done then you click enter click enter like that and then we run betty so we tell betty please betty where are you betty and then i click copy i come here i click best then i click enter so betty is saying it is well i have no problem with you guys so betty is saying she has no problem with us so what about gcc 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 is saying okay even me i have no problem with you list files so we want to see what is inside six lines so dot like that then six dash lines then enter it's, you see it has printed some lines yes that is the right answer git add like that git commit which uh let me not struggle let me not struggle to write git commit let me come here and just copy git commit message copy then i have it here 
paste then i click on enter and then git push yes we are done with that let's come to task number seven what task number seven says that i write a found that wrote diagonal lines in terminal it's the same as the other one but now it's printing using the slash it is using this uh, the backslash so it will print using put car that number of times the character so it will depend number of times you give for example if you give zero times it will print nothing it will be two times it will print slash and then new line slash so you'll print diagonal so let's try let's first of all it will print like something like this you give two it will print slash then new line slash but it will move away from the margin so let's copy the name of the file the name of the file is called seven print diagonal so let's have it that is seven print diagonal that's the name of the file copy like that then i say vi like that and then the name of the file like that and i click i to go to insert mode from there i will copy my code guys and then i explain to you hope you are getting something hope you are understanding something here then i click on copy have it here so what is saying is that in i and j if n is less than zero n is what you give is what you give is less than zero what it happen is that it prints a new line if it is less than zero or if it is zero meaning that you have not asked to print any any diagonal it will print a new line nothing will print in it then now check if i is less than n meaning that you have n is around maybe two because in this case i is zero so if it, it's two you print a slash and then increment that's what you do that you print a slash you have been given here you print a slash and then new line then it's also check it's also check for j is zero j is less than one j plus plus increment to give the space that is it in the number of space it will give so you will notice that as the code will run there is the more you give many times it will more it will go move away from the margin so let's now escape like this and then we run betty betty be a good friend betty be a good friend like this and then paste yes betty is saying that i have no problem what about gcc gcc what will you say gcc gcc says that i have no problem list file then we want to print for diagonal to see check the, the input the output i'm sorry guys you want to check the output what will the output copy come here uh, okay slash sorry for this yes like that paste like that you see three diagonal lines then kit add and then kit commit i will commit to this message here that is the net that the net the task title like that then kit push now clear my terminal it's too much yes next task task number eight write a function that prints square followed by a new line it's the same thing but now it's now this case is square it will print the number of times will be equal to the number of new lines so let me show you first of all let's print the name of the file in this case it's called eight print so let's have it vi and then the name of the file in this case is that one and then I, I to go to insert mode let me copy the code and then i show you what it does okay after that point click on copy then i come here i click on paste escape like that now i am sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry let me go back yes here so i wanted to explain to you code my code says that in j in in i so i first of all it will check is the size size is what you give what you give if you give two it will check it will print two times the square in two times so first of all you check if it is equal to zero it will print nothing for you it will just print for you a new line then you'll now check again for i is equal to zero if it is equal to zero the i that you create the variable that you create that i is has to be less than size and then increment what you do 
then what okay assume this code up to here what does the other one this this one will come and print a new line it just print a new line so it print how many lines it will print depending on the number of size you give so if you give two it will print two space two two new lines and then now the inside code is j is equal to zero j is less than this one then it will increment that particular it will increment that particular j like that it will increment that particular j like that and then it will print for you the number of hash depending on the number of size you give if you give two it will print for you two hash and then it goes to a new line and print another two hash so it will be two hash in two new lines so that it will be now the case if you give 10 it will print for you 10 hash in 10 new lines that will become a square then now betty where are you betty 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 where are you copy here then paste betty what have i done oh i just never added betty betty now paste betty is a good friend awesome come here guys betty is a good friend because I give Betty what she wants. You will enjoy what Betty wants if you understand what Betty wants. GCC says it's okay. List file. Then I come where? Eight squares. So eight dash squares. Like that. Eight squares. I'm sorry. I have to say dot slash eight dash squares. Like that. I believe now that is okay click enter yes you see you give two it prints for you you give 10 it print for you 10 hash and then 10 times now you understand then git odd git commit what's the message the message for committing is this one Let me copy then i come here and say paste like that then keep push all right so let's come to the next task that is task number nine we are about to do we are about to be done ah this number nine is a bit awesome it's asking for this boosters is interview question designed to help out 99 candidate who can seem to program their way out of the white paper bug write a program that can print number from zero to hundred uh, from one to hundred followed by a new line print this is the number uh, and the multiple of five so if the number is a multiple of three it will print this in number of multiple of five it print bus and if it's put multiple of three and five it will print uh, this bus so in this case guys you will just say use modular say let's say for example you have an, a variable called a you say if variable a modulus 3 is equals to 0 meaning that if it's divisible by 3 then print for us this then you come and say if if a modulus 5 meaning that divisible by 5 is equal to 0 and as long as it's equal to 0 then that is print for us bus meaning that it is a divisible of 5 then for both you will say if now 3 times 5 is 15 so we'll just say if a modulus of 15 is equal to zero then you print now this bus meaning that it's a multiple of the two let's do the code and see what it does so the name of the the, the name of the file is called this bus this bus like this i came and say vi then paste this bus like that i to insert mode i'll copy the code i think i've tried to explain your code uh, like this guys it will check copy come here paste and then what does it do i first of all the variable name and then you check variable is equals to one variable has to be less than 100 that's a number between one up to 100 in as long as it's not less than 100 continue printing but only if it is modulus of 15 meaning that if it is a multiple of three and five that is three times five is 15 that is what, what this line means and then if we print for us fin bus else if it's a modulus of three only multiple of three print for us fin bis. else if it's a modulus of uh, multiple of five print bus 
else print that number. If it's not multiple of any, print that number alone. Escape like that, come like that, enter, then run Betty, 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 Betty. Betty, come here, best, enter. Betty saying I'm 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 good. Betty saying I'm good. Okay. Why give us Betty? Why give us the name of the file will be main? Okay. Anyway. Let me copy. And then I run GCC. GCC. What are you saying? GCC is saying it's fine. So let's see. This one nine that is nine is bus what's the answer v i not v i'm sorry it is this way and then you paste that one enter yes this bus one two this bus one two this that's a three four pass it's five this seven eight this pass eleven this that in like that all the way then git add git commit okay commit i'll just use what i have here commit with it then keep push let's come to number 10 number 10 is saying right up a function that print a triangle followed by a new line this is so easy guys it's the same as what we had i'm just writing then i explain to you it's just a simple explanation it's only that they change from triangle square diagonal lines there's nothing different it's just the same concept it's only that it requires you to understand function that is why they are revolving around the same thing but they require you to understand that concept so let's come this way then you'll notice that we have row hashes and spaces so row meaning the number of rows that will print a new line then hashes the number of time it will print for you hashes and then the space in as much as it will print uh, a triangle we need to print something that is uh, it will print a space from the first apex okay there is a triangle there is a point where base it is at the tip and there's another point where it's at the base so at the base it means that the, the number of spaces it will increase is the number of space from the margin to the first hash is with what will determine how sharp will that triangle will be so that is why you will at, at the top of the triangle there is more space from the margin at the bottom of the triangle there is only less spaces from the from the margin so that is why it say check for rows that is number of rows it will print how many rows it will print number of rows based on what you give so if you give 10, it will print 10 rows, first of all. That is what you give here. And then it check rows. Rows now, that is will print a space. Now the spaces, it check for the spaces. Spaces, how many spaces? And then after printing that way, it will now come and say hashes. After you print a space, after printing 10 spaces, hash, and then come now decrement it will print nine spaces now so you will find that you have now two hash the first hash is only one the second row is only is two hashes third row is three hashes fourth row is five four hashes or five hashes and then the number of space between that hashes to the margin is less like that then betty where are you enter Betty saying it's fine. Ls. So let's try triangle. Is triangle? Our triangles is here. Vi. Paste it here. What have I done? Okay, let me resolve this. Okay, 
I had written wrong thing. Now let's let's get back to it. I was to check this one. I use vi instead of using instead of using a uh, slash. Copy now. Let me paste. Sorry for that, but now it's okay. Say what does it say? My tongue cannot execute binary. That one. What have I done? What have I done wrong? Okay, I think I let me remove. I I think I, I might have interfered with it when I get the when it get me to another pl place. Let me copy now and paste it here. Remove paste enter. So I've removed. Let me create again. Run GCC again like that. Enter. So now it's okay. Now let me use this one and use the same thing as here. Then copy paste it here then enter now it's worked yes that's okay so guys that's the end of mandatory task let's get into let's get at first then we get into the advanced task git commit we are committing with what we are committing with triangles triangles like that then git push now let's get to advanced task advanced task is task number 11 number 11 it says this one so let's get we are finding the prime numbers vi 100 dash prime factor Factor like that. Dot C. I to go to insert mode. Then I'll copy the code and I explain to you this now a bit complex one. I know this is what I've been waiting for. Yes, this is a complex one. But nothing much. You just have to understand the code. So unsigned int long, and then you are given this number. What you have been given here. We have the number given here that you are supposed to calculate that uh, prime numbers for that is one two and three and all this so the unsigned ints no guys this is not the case it is not this one this is not for task 11 yes but a bit okay guys okay okay it is this one let me check okay okay this is the number i was looking for i could not see this one i was liking i was like where is this thing okay it's so fine let's continue okay let's now that you have created this one let's get into it let's get into this this file like this i was explained yes so i think that this one you have an, a biggest number like this what what been given here we have been given this on my number and then we have another number you have used in the code you're asking yourself where is 782849 coming from so uh, 782 and 849 is coming from one the square root of that um that is the largest prime factor that is the square root of that particular number which is the the largest i can call it the largest prime factor for example again an example if we are to find the prime numbers of 64 we will just begin and say anything to be less than uh, 8 because 8 is the square root of 64 because if we come to 16 16 will say 16 times 4 which is which it will be 16 multiplied by a prime factor less than the the square root of that particular number so i will use now the square of that number to calculate anything less than that because any multiplication of a number largest than larger than the square root we have to use the prime factors less than that particular square root and that is why in that case i'm saying that i'm using 782 so i had to calculate first of all this one to find the square root of this number which is equal to this number then from there now i is equal to three prime numbers is uh that is it yeah so i is equal to three then that number then i is equal to i plus one i is what i get the first number that i have that is here that is three plus two which is five the next prime number is five the next prime number is seven the next prime number is eleven thirteen seventeen that order so and then while this one percentage of this one is equal to zero in as long as n modulus i is equal to zero meaning that it's a prime number now what you do you 
you see and and another thing is that i n should never be equal to i then what you do next is that so and then what next is return and then return zero so that is all about that code i believe you have understood so what next we run betty betty where are you betty is here betty is saying i'm here copy then i paste it here then enter betty says that prime factor no such file directory did i remove no i didn't remove it says a different prime factor is a not file cannot file hundred this one what files do i have ls do i have this file like that and then why is, is it saying no saying no why where is it prime okay i gave the wrong name i'm very very sorry guys i gave the wrong name here let me copy again let me copy this one and then i say mv rename rename that file this one this one i'm renaming that file to what name i'm renaming to 100 that's why i prefer copying the name 100 dash prime underscore factor dot c then i click on enter so list file now you list see that now we have this where is 100 now again okay here is 100 now let's run betty let's run betty now betty enter yes betty is now working now let's get to gcc i say guys don't panic whenever you get it that is not working as expected don't panic let's try copy come here paste enter yes it's working ls ls we have what are we looking for we are looking for 100 prime factor this one then the output copy here dot that and then we paste that now here and see yes we have the answer we have the answer as expected the last one guys we are here at the last one the last one write a function that print an integer and then you're not allowed to use long neither to use arrays and all those okay let's see what are you expected to see you expect to have a number 98 for, for 2 10 27 10 24 0 and negative 98 okay let's get what is the name of the file vi i will not write the name i'll just copy because i don't want I want, okay i'm not committed or add add to my github eh? let me just finish the last one then I, I i push all of them i come here copy i don't want to spend much time i've spent a lot of time here paste now insert then was the code let me copy the code and i explain up to this far copy come here paste like that escape wq that is okay let me before i quit inter number i is equals to n if n is less than zero then print put car that what as it says the question it uh, asks us to create then ensure that it print a number integer n integer n then so whatever you are given here you equate to an integer called int i that you are creating that is of type i and sign then you say if n is less than zero what do you do you print put car 45 and then this one you give it uh that particular you are giving uh that particular negative so what it first is that it first declare the unsigned integer that are what i'm telling and initializing the value that is you having that it says that int i is equal to the value of n which you will be given which will the user will input that is what is initialized with that and then the function it then checks the value that is either that is divided by 10 this one here it check for that particular value and then what does it do next so uh what it do next is that it add the uh, ascii value for for zero that is after now it check this one it uh, after it does divided that one meaning that it's not a zero number and it has more than one digit and then after it has found that one, it will add a zero value the uh, zero value of the ascii here yeah i believe i explained to my level best 
I'm sorry. So I've escaped. So what next? We run Betty. Betty, where are you? Is for the last time. It is the last time, Betty. Don't be offended. Betty, don't be offended. Is the last time. One last time. Betty saying, okay, it's last time. I'm okay with that. Betty, you have been a good friend. What about GCC? Copy. GCC. GCC be a good friend. Enter. Yes, GCC is a good friend. LS. The last one. 101. Where is 101? Here. Copy. We are expected to have something like this, eh? 98, 420, whatever. So, like this. And then I paste. Then enter. Yes, it prints the right output. Guys, let me now git add. And then git commit. Git commit, I will use what I have here. Here. Copy. And then git push. And now, guys, I believe you have been checking your checker if it is working. And now after this far, we have done 200% of the task. Guys, I believe you will be able to follow up to the end of this uh, uh, video today. You have understood that we got 200. I believe also you too, you will get 200%. And not only 200%, 200% having understood the concept. Congratulations, guys, for being persistent to this level. I believe you will get even new 200%. Cheers, guys. See you next time. African Tech Gurus is a place for you to be. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit on notification bell so that you will receive notification once we post a new video. See you next time. Bye-bye. Have a good uh, day. Happy coding.